Good afternoon, and welcome back to the Wikipinch. Once again, we have here a little USB hub, as you can see, which I'm going to hopefully try and troubleshoot and repair if I can. Um, it doesn't work, which is interesting. And the uh, the way in which it doesn't work is definitely different to what I was expecting. Um, and we shall see. Um, so yeah, I have this. Uh, it was just given to me by a friend of mine. He didn't want it anymore because it didn't work. It's even got a red sticker on the back to show that it doesn't work. Um, I guess he put that there for himself. Um, anyway, so when I got it I was like, oh that's a nice little hub. I can use that. Um, I've got a perfect place where I could use that. And I thought, that sounds great. So I plugged it in. And I'll just plug it in here so we can see what happens. Um, I plugged it in, and uh, a light comes on, a little blue light there at the end there, so I was like, oh, well, that, that seems good. And then I plugged something into it, and nothing happened. Um, and then I checked in my device list, and it wasn't there. There was nothing listed. Um, and I even checked in, like, the log messages, and there's absolutely nothing uh, to suggest it was even plugged in. It's um, completely completely undetected. There's not even an error message saying that it couldn't be detected or something. It's as if there's absolutely nothing there, so it's strange. It gets power, but it's not detected at all by the, the computer whatsoever, like nothing. Um, and my first thought was that possibly the cord was, was broken. Um, I checked inside the plug, and of course the, the contacts all look alright. They're not bent, they're not corroded or anything. That can be one problem. Um, but I figured, well, maybe the cord got bent and one of the data lines is broken or something, um, which would make sense if it's still got power, but wouldn't detect whatsoever. Uh, so I opened it up. And I've already done that, actually. The back uh, has two clips at this end, so if you get a spudger sort of down the side and pry it off, and then it's got these two little stakes at the end here that go into these two holes, so you've got to sort of pry that straight up, don't try and pull it sideways or these will snap off and you'll never be able to get it in tightly again. But there we go, so the back comes off like that and then we've got the board in here and it's got two screws there so you have to take those off obviously. Um, seems a relatively simple design and I thought well you know I've replaced cords on things before perhaps this just needs a cord replacement which is not that hard to do. You can. I, I usually buy cheap printer cords for like a couple of dollars and just cut the USB B plug off and use the rest of it. Um, there we go, this should come out. That comes out, just slides out there once you take the screws off. And I got this here, and I had a look, and uh, <laughs> you can probably tell. There we go. This thing will focus. It's pretty obvious what the problem is. Can you see the problem yet? <laughs> the main chip has a massive crater in it. Um, yeah, so uh, as soon as I saw that, I was like, well, that's why it doesn't work. <laughs> um, and my second thought was, how the heck did that even happen? I mean, this thing has a USB plug on it, um, and this thing has a, a micro USB. I, I'm pretty sure that's also for power, maybe extra power. Um, it could, it might be meant to be a powered hub and it gets extra power from here. And I, I mean, it's not like other ones I've seen that have a, a DC barrel jack on them where you could plug in the wrong power supply. Um, so I can only think I uh, somehow, maybe it got plugged into one of those quick charge chargers and it somehow got 9 volts or 12 volts or whatever um, instead, which really shouldn't happen unless the charger was faulty, I guess. But yeah. Um, Somehow it looks like it's had a massive over voltage or reverse voltage or something. So I figured, well, you know, I might as well still try and fix it. Um, it took me a while to figure out what the chip was because of the crater in the top, but um, I was able to find just enough numbers on it that were still legible. Um, and I got in there close to the magnifying loop and everything. And yeah, it uh, turns out it's a. What was it? Just got to look at the new chips here. I, I bought some new ones off eBay. The uh, the new chip is called a FE 1.1C, and then it says USB 2.0 hub on it, and then there's like a batch number or date code or whatever. Um, so yeah, it's an FE 1.1, and there's different revisions of it. Uh, I don't know what the version is on the on the uh, the board here. It might have been uh, something else. It is. Hard to read. 1.1s or something, possibly. Either way, 
um yeah it's a uh, it's obviously um a special dedicated uh USB hub chip that's all it does it just provides four ports i believe um there is a data sheet somewhere that i found um but yeah so i'm going to obviously try and replace this chip and hopefully see what happens and um, hopefully it'll work again because it would be quite useful to have um I mean, yeah, it's just a USB 2 four-point hub. It's not particularly um, worth much. So, you know, in general, most people probably just buy another one. But, you know, hey, why not? Let's see if we can fix it. It sounds like the only thing wrong with it is that the chip has blown up and there's no other active circuitry on here at all that I can see. Um, the fuse is still good, hilariously. Or the fusible resistor or whatever they've got there. They've got a 0 ohm resistor here where I think there should be a... <laughs> Actually, it's a diode, I think, for reverse polarity protection. Um, yeah, but anyway, it, it all seems to be fine. Um, the pins in the in the uh, sockets are not bent or anything, so... Yeah, I'm just going to replace that chip and uh, see what happens. Now, the fun part, of course, is the problem here. The problem we have is, of course, this is a service mount IC, so getting it off will be tricky, and of course we've got this connector literally right next to it, um, and it's not even one that you can unplug. It's uh, soldered onto the board, and this is a multi-layer board, and this is a multi-layer board, and we've got very fine pads there, and I don't really want to try and desolder the connector, because it's quite possible I'll uh, rip a pad or a trace or something, and I don't know how many layers this board has, it might be two, I think it's just two, but it could be more. Um, so yeah, it looks like that'd be a pain. So I'm thinking, uh, what I may do to remove the chip, instead of using hot air like I normally would, because I think that will possibly mount the connector, um, I suppose I could put foil tape around it to try and block the heat. Um, but what I might try instead, uh, yeah, could you please stay in focus? That'd be wonderful. I think what I may try and do is a different trick, which is to uh, cut the pins. And of course, it'd be good if I had some chip quick, but I don't. Um, but one option is to uh, cut the pins at the body of the chip with a sharp knife, and then, of course, you can just take them all off with a solder wick and a big blob afterwards, um, which is one trick. So I, I may try that. Um, I'm not sure. So yeah, you take, like, a sharp knife and you just because the pins are so thin and you just you know run that along there and cut them you have to be careful though you don't push too hard and go straight through and then cut a trace or something because then you've got to try and repair a you know like a point <laughs> point two millimeter trace or something which is never fun um, so yeah it, it, it's something you want to do with caution but it is a it is a possible option chip quick would be the best option here I think but I don't have any, like I said. Okay, so I kind of tried the knife trick uh, down here. Um, where was it? Just in this area here. Uh, I'm not sure if I have a decent enough knife or a sharp enough blade or something. Um, it's kind of hard to cut, and I think I'd have to put too much pressure. Um, and I am scared of, you know, cutting a trace or something um, and causing more damage. So I think what I'll do is I'll, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll use the hot air to remove this chip, I think. Alright, I've got a plan. I don't know if it's a good plan, but it's a plan nonetheless. I've put some sort of tin foil around here. I couldn't actually find my tape. It's probably buried in a box somewhere, and it would be a monumental effort to get it out. So I'm just using some tin foil, and then I also stuck one of these uh, knife blade things in here between the connector and the chip. Um, I think that might help if it doesn't keep falling over like this. Um, yeah, okay, that's useful. Yeah, one of these little you know, segmented blades from one of this, these sort of knives. I um, don't know why my camera keeps lagging. Yeah. I need to fix that. There's a lot of things I need to fix. But let's fix this first, and then we can try something else. Okay, so, hot air time. Um, this will be a little noisy. Uh, this is probably lead-free stuff, so I'm going to crank it up to uh, a lot something like 450 degrees or something um, and then I'm going to uh, heat this up um, the airflow will keep that blade pushed off the connector so hopefully it'll work um, yeah just, um, let's get some tweezers in there and
Actually, that may not be hot enough. I think I need to turn it up some more. Yeah. Let's go all the way to like 460. Because this is a... a thick board, I think. And a big chip. And, uh... There we go. We got it. It's coming off. That one on the ground plane was hard to get off, but there we go. That's, uh... That's come off there. Excellent. Now if I just put my hot air away... Um, turn that down... Right. So that was fairly easy. This will probably be hot as hell by now, so... We don't want that on there. I'm going to take off this tin foil. Oh, yeah, that's uh, that's really hot. But the uh, the connector seems to have survived. Um, there's a slight bit of melting. Uh, yeah, in that corner there, you can see, but it's very light. Um, hmm. It shouldn't be a problem. I think everything's still fine. So that's good. That seems to have worked, I guess. Uh, I imagine without that metal there, it probably would have been a lot, a lot more melted. <gasps> Whoops! I just clicked stop recording by accident. Um, as I was just going to say, what you can see here, um, possibly these pins there. Uh, a couple of those pins actually separated uh, from the chip when I pulled it off. Um, that one right on the end there was the hardest to get off because it's connected to this big ground plane or power plane or whatever it is. Um, but yeah, it looks like I cut successfully through maybe two or three of these pins. Um, so I suppose if I'd been careful with the knife and, and kept going, I probably would have actually got it off that way, but I just was a bit worried. In fact, in this case, it probably would have been fine because um, if you look here, the bit in the middle is actually just a big... big uh, extension of this plane here, so I suppose there's uh, uh, there's a couple of traces up in this corner that could have been damaged uh, if I'd done that, but yeah, I guess I probably could have used the knife, but uh, whatever, it's off now with the hot air, it seemed to work. We only have minor meltage on this connector, not very much at all, so I think that's fine. I just need to clean up these pads, uh, take off those bits of leg that came off, um, yeah, so that 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 would have been alright, I guess. Um, you can see the chip, yeah, two of those pins came off. Um, but yeah, it was dead anyway, <laughs> as evidenced by the giant burn hole in the side. So that can go away. Um, I can clean up these pads and we can uh, put another chip on, and hopefully it'll work. I don't need the hot air to put the new chip on, I can just solder it in manually um, with a soldering iron. There's just enough clearance there, I think, that I can do it. Um, might be a little bit tricky on on this part where there's a a little resistor in the corner. That pin there next to this resistor, I guess. But the good thing is that the pin connected to the power plane is all the way on here, so um, that will be the hardest one to solder because it'll have the most thermal mass. But luckily, it's out right in the open on this edge where I can access it the most easily. So I think that should work fine. I think that might be in focus. I'm not sure. Um, anyway, I've got my soldering iron. So I can just put some fresh solder on all these pads here. Um, take off these legs. There we go. Just wipe those off on my sponge. I'm working around a uh, TV that's on the other side of my workbench, so it's a little bit annoying, but uh, it'll get there in the end, I think. Alright, so... Yeah. That looks good. Alright, now I can just work these pads. Make sure they're nice and flat. Um, this is really easy, because there's like basically no thermal mass for these. Um, they're all just connected to skinny traces, so it's, uh, well, 
Aside from this power one or whatever it is in the corner. But the rest are much easier to do. Which is always nice. Just get some fresh wick there. Yeah, I don't know... Uh, Yeah, that looks pretty good. Excellent. Um, sorry, you probably can't see that because the camera's not really in focus, but if I bring it up there, um, <laughs> you can see a whole lot of flux residue, but the pads are all nice and clean now. There's nothing stuck on there. Um, I'll just clean that off. So I don't know what happened there. Um, suddenly the camera just froze up and yeah, okay, so I just was saying, I'm not sure what part of that recorded, but I was just saying I was wicking off the uh, the solder off these pads and I had an inspection and there was uh, still a little bit on this side, so I just want to completely flatten these. It's important to get them as flat as possible, otherwise it uh, can be quite annoying to try and solder in the new chip if you've got all these like bumpy old bits of solder there. So. Yeah, it helps the helps greatly if you make sure everything is nice and flat. Um, there we go. I think that's better now. It's always good to remove the flux residue anyway, just so you can see what you're doing. Sometimes stuff can hide under flux residue, and you know you may not notice that a pad has come off or something's ripped. Um, so it's a good idea to clean everything up and inspect it well and make sure that it's all fine so that uh, you don't confuse yourself when it doesn't work. Um, here we go, that all looks nice I think. Yep. Alright, just take another check. Yep, everything looks really good there. But yeah, I just wanted to point out here, like, that point there where it says U1, like there's a little scratch there. So that's a scratch that I made while trying to cut those pins there, so, um, where the knife slipped off. So it's a good point. Yeah, it, it would be easy to, uh, slip off and cause damage. Um, again, if I'd been really careful, I could have done it here with the knife, but I think the, the hot air was probably the best option. Yeah, interesting packaging. They've kind of taped it down to some anti-static foam, or at least I hope that's anti-static foam. I don't know. Anyway, which way around does this go? Well, it's upside down for a start, so <laughs> let's turn it around the right way. Um, I need some light. <coughs> Let me get some light on here so I can actually read the marking and find out which pin is which. Um, oh yeah, there we go. Um, oh no, this does say FE1.1S, I think. Yeah, there we go. So that's pin 1, and that's our pin 1 marking on here. And you see there's the notch marking as well. Um, so it goes this way around. And the uh, the markings matched up with what the previous chip was like anyway. I have to put a little bit of solder on one pin. Which is going to be fun, because this is really, really uh, fine pitch stuff. There we go. Got a little bit there. Um, I'll just get my tip cleaner stuff. Um, right, so if I bring this in here, I gotta take the chip around and tack it down on that one pin. Try to get that in there. I think that's alright. But there we go, yeah, the alignment of that looks pretty good. You don't have to worry too much about putting too much solder on, because you can always wick it off later. Um, yeah. It 
In fact, one method is kind of flood and then suck it off afterwards. Which is kind of what I'm doing here, because... Um, I think trying to do it any other way at this point would probably be rather difficult. So that looks uh, that looks pretty bad right now. But... Then we get the solder wick again. Um, and as long as my dispenser doesn't go weird, uh, then I can just uh, go along here and clean that up. And it's a bit tricky, but it works. Um, you got to keep cutting off. Obviously the the used wick, and getting a fresh piece because it fills up with solder pretty fast when you're doing this, um, and all that kind of thing. So because there's a lot there, and then when there's a fine enough amount of solder there, there's not too much. Um, you can just touch it up with the iron um, and if we go up here you can see all those pins are actually soldered they're not bridged they all look pretty good um, so I just have to do that on the other side so here we go we started out with a giant blob and then it's just a case of just carefully wicking off the excess solder until you get a decent uh, decent soldering on all the pins and there's nothing bridged there I mean, this is obviously an easier way than, say, trying to uh, redo it with the hot air because then I'd have to worry about melting the connector again. I'd have to get all the solder paste on there and make sure it all worked. So it's much easier to do it this way. Uh, let me just check this. Okay, pins four and five are bridged. Four, five, and six are bridged. I just have to. But I should just be able to wipe my iron. Um, actually, I'll show you that because it's quite—it's uh, not that obvious. Let me see. Can I get this in? Yeah, if you can just see, count pins four, five, and six. I've got a little solder bridge there. It's not super obvious. It could be missable if you weren't paying attention. Um, so yeah, I'll just bring my iron in and just sort of the fact that there's hardly any solder there means that the the heat should just melt it and the surface tension should pull it off I believe let's see and there we go yeah we can see those bridges are gone hopefully hard to tell on this because I can't really get it too close in but yeah it all looks good so I'll clean up the flux residue again do another close-up inspection, but I think it looks good to me. All right, come in again with this. <laughs> Give it a nice cleaning. You can see the flux all going on there, all the brown stuff. It just shows that it's working. Obviously, there's going to be some flux residue under the chip that you can't really get out unless you. <coughs> and probably used an ultrasonic cleaner and all that kind of thing but I don't think it'll matter here yeah there's a bit of white residue between some of the pins I thought at first it might have been a bridge but it's actually just flux residue um, that's where a brush is uh, more in handy I mean it wouldn't be much of a deal because it's uh, very low voltage but it is a high speed digital interface so it's possible that any flux between pins like on the data lines could you know pull that down and make it not perform properly or have errors or whatever so it's probably worth just uh, getting a bit of extra cleaning there just to make sure 
Again, that's why I think like on motherboards and stuff, high speed stuff, you do need to sort of use an ultrasonic cleaner or something to really get under those chips because if there is flux residue there, it can create uh, impedance problems and leakage and sort of stuff and the, the digital signals may not work properly. Um, all that kind of thing, so uh, can be worth worth looking into. But for this, it should probably be fine. Um, I'm just gonna have another look, inspect it again. Yeah, and now I've got rid of those flux residues there. Everything looks good. Everything looks clean. Um, I should be fine to power it back up and see what happens. Well, why not, right? If it crashes, then. We'll, uh, I'll restart and come back and tell you that it crashed, but it'll probably be okay. So there's my terminal here. You can see we've got these are the current connected USB devices. Um, we've got a bunch of stuff there. We've got a Rarlink Wi-Fi adapter. We've got this hub that I've already got connected. We've got a card reader somewhere. I have a card reader. Okay. Um, <laughs> apparently. Okay, uh, I've got the uh, receivers for my Bluetooth keyboard and my mouse. Anyway, we've got some stuff there that's there already. Now if we plug this in, <laughs> the fun part will be if it all goes up in flames, but it shouldn't. I suppose I should switch back to the camera view, so if it does go up in flames you can at least see it and laugh. Um, <laughs> Alright, let's plug it in. We've got a nice blue LED there. Have we got any flames? No, the chip. The chip is not hot. That's a good start. Now let's go back to the terminal and and see what it says. Is anything new showing up? It does not look like it actually. That's a shame. Okay, let's check. New high-speed device detected. USB hub. Okay, have I just confused myself? Oh, this is not displaying the entire screen. Let's see, let's unplug this. Just see, run it again. Oh no, USB disconnect. Yeah, so there we go, USB disconnect device number three. That's what happened when I just unplugged it. Um, if I just plug it back in again, run it again. Yeah, it says, uh, it does say it's found. So, it seems to be working. It seems to be detecting, at least. Um, I don't know why the serial number is zero. Manufacturer is zero. That could be... That could be an issue. Ah, no, hang on. Terminus Technology Hub. Uh, yeah, we got two hubs with the same name there. Uh, if I unplug this... Run list USB again. Ah, yes. Terminus Technology Hub. Now there's only one of them. So I guess my other hub is running with the same chip, I suppose. Um, but yeah, there we go. So it does look like it's detected, actually. Um, so that's cool. And it looks as if it's working. So I guess I just got to plug something into it. Um, to see if it actually functions. I might as well put it back in the case first though, because it does seem to be okay. I just don't want to have the, the wires all um, getting strained, pulled around while I'm trying to play with it, so I'll just put it back in the box here. Um, but that's good. That looks like it might be fine. Um, That's a quite a pleasing result. Um, push that in there. Yeah, that's all good. Where are the screws? Back it off until it clicks, so you got the same thread pattern. And then put the screw in. It's a very clever trick. Otherwise, you risk recutting the threads in the plastic and. If you do that a few times, it all becomes loose and terrible and doesn't work. Um, right. 
I suppose I can clip the bottom on. Um, we can take off this red sticker because it's not dead anymore. Um, I can stick these back there. I think that should be all right. Right, so let's uh, plug it back in. I got this plugged into a hub, but it's fine. A hub plugged into a hub. There we go. The light is back on. Now I've got to find something to plug into it um, to see if it can actually, you know, connect devices. Um, do I have anything useful? Well, actually, I do. Here we go. One of these USB to TTL converter things, RS-232, I think. Um, but it's obviously not RS-232 logic level, it's TTL. Um, yeah, I guess if I plug that in, that should tell me if anything's happening. Okay, let's go this USB. And now we have this, Prolific Technology PL2303 serial port, which is what I just plugged in, so it does seem to be working. Um, we look at this again. We've got new connected thing. Um, Convert detected. So if I just unplug this again, it should show disconnect. Yep. Try it in the next port. Convert detected. Disconnect. Try it again. Disconnect number six, yep. So now we try um, try port three. Yep, it shows up as well. Huh, that's his serial number zero two. So we've got six, seven, eight. So it's working there. Now it's disconnected. Now we plug it into port four. Do it again, it shows up. So it works on all ports, it's detecting a USB device. Um, so all ports are connected and working. Uh, that seems good. Um, it looks like it's fixed. I suppose I could try something else, like a USB flash drive, do some like heavy transfer, make sure it actually can handle sustained like data throughput. Yeah, all right, so I've got a little uh, flash drive here. Um, I'll plug that in. Port 1, uh, go back to here, oh, whoops, <coughs> go back to here, well, it definitely works, uh, volume inserted, attached disk, 32 gig, yeah, I've just created a new folder on this drive, uh, just so you don't see any of my files. I'll copy this uh, disk image of my Acorns hard drive to it, 540 megabytes. There we go. Um, this will sort of pause at the end because I think these are cheap flash drives with some kind of caching feature. So it goes really fast and then it stops for a while as it actually writes everything out to the flash. But it does seem to function. So I think we're all good. Yeah, so it's kind of ridiculous. I mean, th these are like $3 flash drives. Um, so I shouldn't be surprised, no one should be surprised, when you buy the cheapest ones you can. I just use these for, for nothing important really, so I don't care that they're slow. Um, but yeah, just wait a bit. Yeah, it'll get there eventually. <laughs> yeah, the progress bar, yeah. It'd be nice if the progress bar actually made sense, but it, um, the flash drive tricks the operating system, I think, into thinking that it's gone faster than it has because it's writing to the cache or whatever. And then it stops while it writes to the main flash memory. It's uh, pretty ridiculous. Which is also a good way to corrupt your files if you're not um, paying attention, I suppose. Um, if you're like, you think it's copied and then you're waiting and you're waiting. Yeah, see, there we go. So now it's actually written. If I'd pulled it out before then or something, it would have been lost. I could repeat that test on every single port, but I probably won't. Um, I've ejected it there. Or maybe I will. I'm not sure. But let's just see if it works. And all the other ports first. Um, yeah, that shows up shows up again. 
that's detected. You can see just got auto auto mounted. Um, yeah, we could copy that file another time, just for fun. <laughs> uh, oh. Yeah, that's a problem with this uh, Linux. It doesn't ask you to rename the file automatically, so that's kind of kind of annoying. Yeah, see, look at that. It's even faster now. <laughs> it's uh, yeah. Cheap flash drives, uh, a bit of a troll, but anyway, I mean that seems to work. I I, I suspect that the other ports are fine. Um, there's no real reason to suspect that they don't work. Uh, I would say, yeah, I, I just um, I, I would say that it's fixed. Uh, my only real question is how the heck did that chip get blown up in the first place? <laughs> um, yeah, the only thing I can think of is a quick charge charger that was faulty or didn't detect properly. Um, I have no idea how else that could have happened. But it seems to be fixed now, it seems to be working, which is great. I can use it. Uh, use it as the uh, device that I was going to use it as. Everything seems to be great. Um, let's go back here, because it's kind of boring watching a... Oh, of course, then it just finished. <laughs> but yeah, kind of boring watching a uh, file transfer progress bar that isn't really indicative of the actual transfer. Anyway, but there we go. Uh, we're not worrying about that right now, but that's the uh, the USB hub. It seems to be fixed. Um, once again, uh, cheap ICs from eBay <laughs> seem to have come through, which is uh, surprising. But yeah, there was literally nowhere else to get those chips, um, as is the case for a lot of things these days. Um, it seems like you just have to take your chance on eBay or AliExpress or whatever, and uh, hope you get lucky. There are other uh, shops like UT Source and LCSC, which I have used before, and they're probably a bit more reputable um, than other places. So if you're worried about quality, probably best to try there, but uh, I actually went to buy some chips from um, a UT Source the other day for this TV I'm working on, and um, yeah, it turns out they have like a hundred dollar US minimum order now or something, and, and they've got much more expensive shipping, so it's quite annoying. Uh, they used to be really quite good. It was, I think, like a minimum order of twenty dollars, and then you get free shipping, but yeah, now everything has changed, so it's a bit annoying. Um, still have no idea how that chip got blown up. <laughs> Maybe I'll ask my friend about it. Maybe he'll tell me when he sees this video. I don't know. But there we go. It's a uh, Orico four port USB 2.0 hub um, there's no model number on here I don't think maybe there was on the PCB but I didn't look um, but anyway it seems to be good now so that looks like a successful repair once more so hopefully that was interesting hopefully that was useful hopefully you enjoyed it and I'll see you next time <laughs> it's kinda of weird waving at the camera this close but there we go